In this line of work, I spend a lot of time thinking and talking critically about games and the companies that make them. Of course, there's a fair share of positivity too, but any critic worth their salt must well actually be a critic. These days, thanks in part to the internet and the work of content creators like myself, people are becoming more and more aware of the shady things that happen, especially within the AAA games industry. Mostly, people are more than ready to get out the pitchforks, but especially from the Pitchfork Emporium for this illustrious occasion. But while fanboys are always going to fanboy, two companies in particular always seem to get a free pass. The reason why these two companies get a free pass a lot of the time is a complex topic, but to lump all of the many reasons under one helpful umbrella term, I would say that it's down to nostalgia. Both of these two, Nintendo and Bethesda, are the creators of things many of us played and loved in our formative years. Nintendo, of course, has a warm place in many childhoods, and Bethesda has a fairly similar place for a lot of people in their young teenage years. I could probably make a whole video on how these companies get a free pass, but we're here to talk about Bethesda and how the Creation Club might have finally done serious damage to this protection of nostalgia. Now, for years, Bethesda has released some pretty great games, but they've also been heavily flawed. And I'm talking about, oh, I don't like that mechanic. I'm, of course, talking about the infamous Bethesda Bugs TM. Their games are notoriously buggy on launch, and it's often down to the very passionate modding community to come along and fix it. Now, despite their long and storied history of releasing games in a pretty messy state, Bethesda have gotten pretty much a free pass for them for this from a lot of people. This has always frustrated me because while I love many games that they have produced, people should be just as keen to jump on Bethesda for the buggy mess that was Skyrim on a launch on PC as they were, for example, many years later, for Ubisoft's vomit pile of the game Assassin's Creed Unity. But it does seem that the goodwill Bethesda garnered over the years is finally starting to dwindle. Exactly where this began is of course hard to pinpoint, but I would say the first real loss of this goodwill was the first attempt by Bethesda to do paid mods. This was nothing short of a disaster, as they tried to insert a paid system into something that had always been free. The backlash was loud and, quite frankly, well deserved. Its absolutely awful attempt was made worse by people recolouring skins and weapons and asking ludicrous amounts for them. Bethesda was fairly quick on the draw to take this down, but not before their reputation took a serious beating. Now, they also had a little bit of negativity surrounding Fallout 4, which was by all accounts a good game, but for many it was also missing many of the key components that made Fallout, well, Fallout. But the goodwill held strong yet. And the next big one is, of course, still happening, the Creation Club. It is, in all honesty, paid mods. They can dress it up in a fancy suit and bowl a hat, but paid mods is what the Creation Club is. While it lacks the absolutely shambolic qualities of Bethesda's original attempt, it actually manages to be worse in other ways. One of the issues behind the Creation Club is, well, the very fact that Bethesda are trying to make money from mods at all. You might argue, but Amata, they gave us the tools, they make the games moddable, why can't they? The thing is though, they already are. One of the main reasons why Skyrim is still played today is due to the mods. There are small mods, large mods, and mods that basically qualify as their own unofficial DLC. It's this content that keeps people playing and keeps the game relevant even though it released back in 2011. Modding is a huge value add. It's undoubtedly sold many copies and also kept people playing for way, way longer and also kept it within the public consciousness for longer. So you can see where I'm going with this, but there's to already benefit rather hugely from mods. But leaving that to the side for one moment, there are three prongs to my issue with the Creation Club in its current form. The first prong is Bethesda's BS reasoning for existing, when they said it was to create, quote, better quality mods, now this will tie into a later prong, and pay the mod developers. Now while these modders absolutely do deserve to be paid for their work, we all know Bethesda created the club for one reason, and that is their bottom line. Obviously this is far from the first time we got a PR for reason, well, PR reason for something rather, and we all know the underneath reason, the real reason. Sadly, doublespeak is fairly common within not just this industry, but many. The second prong is more damning, and that is the use of tokens. This is a trick as old as time, and frankly an annoying one. Let's say the smallest amount of tokens you can buy is 750. 
but a mod costs, say, 400 for a basic mod. It's fairly obvious why this has been done, and, well, I don't think you need me to tell you, but it is obviously to force you to buy a whole new set of 750 because you are short however many tokens when you want to buy your next mod. And of course, the pricing in itself is an issue. The mods on the Creation Club are, in my opinion, way too expensive for what they are, especially when there are similar, and sometimes exactly the same but better, mods available on the Nexus for free. Ostensibly, the Creation Club has added microtransactions into Bethesda's huge budget AAA games, as of course this is in Fallout 4 as well. And neither of these games need microtransactions to keep themselves afloat. Now, I don't want to turn this into yet another rant against microtransaction and full price games, so I won't belabor this point anymore. Now, our third prong is actually to do with the quality promise. Now, while it is good to see these mods being paid for their work and to see these mods being developed on an actual development schedule, the fact is there are many mods on the Creation Club that are watered down versions of what is already available for free. There are power armor mods, furniture mods, and god knows what all else that are outshone up by their free counterparts. Now, this does also tie into a promise that we would not see any mods available on the club that were also on the Nexus which is clearly not being kept in many, many instances. The final cherry on this mud bite is, of course, the horse armor. Oh, Bethesda lols, you say, Mimi. Oh, wait, you're charging for it? Yeah, they put horse armor on the club and then charge for it. History, how you do love to repeat yourself. But it does seem that finally Bethesda might have done permanent irreparable damage to their goodwill. Oh, I'm certain there are people going, but, 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 as I say this, but it does seem that their desire for money has overridden their good sense, and the nostalgia glasses might have finally fallen off a few pairs of eyes. But, in all honesty, it's tough to say for sure if this will last. The club seems to me such an obvious smack in the face to a loyal fan base that has not only saved their games at launch and massively improved them, but kept them feeling fresh after years and years and years. But another cynical part of me says that all of this will be forgotten and forgiven the second they say the words Elder Scrolls VI at a future E3 event. But people do have their limits, and I think Bethesda might have finally pushed their luck too far with some people. I have no doubt that the Creation Club isn't going anywhere. It has been getting a mixed response overall, but nowhere near that of the paid mods previously. I just hope that people do as many tell them to do, vote with their wallets. I think one of the other reasons why this has probably just caused a lot of people to go, you know what, that's me done, I'm dusting my hands of you Bethesda, I'm not playing this game anymore, I'm not going to support the Creation Club, is because, well, nothing happens in a vacuum. If this had happened before, like, every other game on, in the AAA space was adding loot boxes and microtransactions and, you know, rinsing the fan base for every cent that they could, perhaps this would have gone down better. But obviously people are getting pretty tired of that behaviour, and as they all should. I have always spoken against microtransactions in full price games, and even if they're single player only, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And it, this is basically microtransactions. It is microtransactions. These are basically paid mods disguised as mini DLC or whatever BS they came out with, but it is microtransactions. But with mods! Yay! Double the fun. I mean, hopefully this doesn't last, but it probably will. It's it's still around. Which This is longer than the original attempt to last it from Bethesda. Um, my main hope is that this doesn't cause like a full-on like ripple effect and many other people in the industry try it, but if it's successful they probably will because that's why we're seeing so many people do microtransactions in full price games because despite the fact that a lot of us are sick of it, there are plenty who obviously buy into the system. So yeah, it's, we're going to have to see basically, but uh, I think Bethesda might have finally stepped too far. We'll have to see though. Thank you very much for watching guys. I'll see you next time.